Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon and good, uh, good evening to everybody who's joined today's session. My name is Sarah Chowdhury and I'm the Sales Manager for the Certus Flex and I'd like to introduce today's presenters, my colleagues Dr Sabrina Dallenbach and the Product Manager for the Certus Flex, Boris Maurer. In the search for improving cell screenings, researchers are increasingly turning to miniaturized systems, allowing reactions in smaller volumes while retaining previous screening conditions. Miniaturization reduces precious working time, the amount of reagent and cells required for screening, resulting in lower overall running costs of your studies. In this event, we introduce the novel droplet microarray from AquaRay and present how it is processed for cell screening using the low volume digital liquid dispenser, Certus Flex. Let's go over to Dr. Sabrina Dallabak and Boris Maurer and learn more about the droplet microarray. Sabrina will start off with a presentation and then Boris will follow on by a live demo of how to dispense onto these chips and explain how to set up cell screening experiments. Over to you guys. Thanks, Sarah, for the introduction and welcome everybody to our webinar. Thanks for joining. So, cell screening is central to the development of new drugs and it also holds growing relevance to personalized medicine. Yet, um, the current methods have still some significant limitations. So, HDS approaches play a crucial role in identifying new drug candidates. However, the conventional HDS, HDS that uses most commonly such micro titer plates, and it suffers from a couple of drawbacks. So, they are still relatively time consuming and laborious. They often require large and expensive robots for pipetting. And importantly, big pharmaceutical companies, they screen more than 100,000 compounds a day. So a lot of such micro titer plates and large volumes of reagent are required. And um, currently these consumables altogether are estimated to account for up to 75% of the cost of HDS to the companies. Then another important aspect is depending on the cell type used, cells might be limited in their availability, like for example, um, for patient samples, or they can be restricted in their expandability. So to overcome these limitations, Aqua Array developed these miniaturized droplet microarrays, short DMA, and they consist of hydrophilic spots located on superhydrophobic background. And, uh, due to the extreme differences in wettability, such tiny squared droplets would form upon applying aqua solution. The DMA is an established platform for HTS of live cells in nanoliter droplets using 2D and also 3D cell culture models. And with this DMA technology, at least 95% of reagents can be saved compared to even the best micro titer plates. Now let's have a closer look to the surface of such droplet microarrays. A so-called ChemBias on-chip platform had been developed that combines the chemistry here and the biology shown here together uh, in such processes, together in such a miniaturized format on the DMA. And the idea behind is to combine everything on a single chip. So the on-chip synthesis, the characterization, as well as the biological cell-based screening. And as depicted underneath, um, this combination uh, reduces the time required for everything dramatically. And if you wish to get more detailed information on this CAMBIAS platform, I'd recommend the publication of Benz and colleagues that have been published in 2019 in Nature Communications. So back to the chips. The combination is possible because the CAMBIAS platform is compatible for both. It can handle organic solvents that are required for the synthesis, as well as also the aqua solutions um, that are necessary for the biological screenings. Now this leads me already to my next slide because this is actually one of the reasons why Aqua Array decided for the Satisflex in order to dispense their cells onto the droplet microarray. So 
The Cetus wax can handle all kinds of fluids from low viscosity, high viscosity, solvents, acids, and also many more. Then second, the flexible state-of-the-art valve technology with a unique precision accuracy at high speed that is depicted here underneath the device um, has shown to be very compatible for dispensing the specific pattern of their DMAs. Then next with a wide volume range, which starts from smaller than 50 nanoliters and up to the desired volume, it covered the nanoliter range that Aqua Ray needed to dispense. And last but not least, they required obviously a device that was able to gently dispense cells. And this I'd like to show you now I'm presenting their data. So for their DMA application, Aqua Ray used here um, HENA cells, which you can see up here stained with calcium and here dispensed in 150 nanoliter droplets on the array and 100 cells were dispensed in this volume and here you can see the direction of printing it was such an S shape and doing so a single valve only took 52 seconds in order to um, dispense 672 spots which is one microarray and Boris will show you later that four of these actually would fit on a adapter and can be dispensed at once. Now the viability was then analyzed 20 hours after dispensing and as the results show you can see here the cells were distributed homogeneously. They looked alike and from the morphological point of view they looked comparable to those of a normal cell culture and the viability of the cells was 93%. So after all, scientists at Aquaray found the Sirtis Flex to be the perfect match for dispensing the cells of two their DMAs. And with this, I'd like to hand over to my colleague Boris, who will give a demonstration on how the Sirtis Flex dispenses onto these droplet microarrays. So thank you, Sarah and Sabrina. Now I'd like to show you the Sirtis Flex using my webcam. So, as you can see here, the microarray, a microarray is located at the left side on the plate holder. At the moment, there's only one located, but there is space for another three. The red part is the dispensing head, which can be configured with eight independent channels using our micro valves. At the moment, it's configured with one uh, tubing connected to a 50 mil falcon tube and at the other channel there is a 5 mil syringe uh, especially to dispense expensive reagents to minimize the dead volume. Now I'd like to show you how the Sirtis Flex is performing to dispense onto those microarrays. Therefore I'm gonna switch to the closer webcam I hope you're able to see the droplets shooting out of the valves. So, the system is now dispensing 50 nanoliters from channel 3 and 150 from channel 4 at the same time. And of course, you could configure more than four channels at the same time to do more complex uh, protocols. That was just a short and quick uh, performance test. <clears throat> and as I told you before, we're using syringes, especially for self dispensing. That would be also possible to mix in the syringe and therefore it's possible to attach a magnetic stirrer. Let's switch the camera again. It could look like this. And if I'm switching on, you can see the small magnetic disc is spinning in the syringe to mix the cells. That's just one option to increase the dispensing or the, the dispensing uh, quality. 
Further, it would be possible to use an angled head, which we specially designed to dispense more uh, to dispense cells more gently into the well plates. <clears throat> and I like to show you how to switch from one head to the other. That can be easily done by disconnecting a channel straight head. And connect the angled head. Just tighten with one small screw. Like this. Now I'm gonna remove the micro arrays. I like to show you how to dispense into a 5036 well plate using the angled head. Yeah, I'm gonna switch to the other cam. So, somewhere to the configuration. Now we are connected to a 250 mil conical bottle, connected to channel eight. There is only one micro valve located in the dispensing head. I quickly switch to my software. Now I've got to dispense just one line at the front with channel eight. So, as you can see, the, the head is 22 degrees angle, which allowed us to dispense on the well wall to be more gently, especially for cells dispensing. It's hard to see it on the webcam, therefore I pre-recorded a slow motion movie, which I like to present you now. Here you go. As you can see, the jet is hitting the, the well at the wall and the fluid goes gently to the bottom. <clears throat> As I told you before, same as the straight head, you can configure all those eight channels with different valve types. You can use uh, syringes or tubings coming out of bottles to create your complex uh, protocols. <clears throat> so again, that was just a short overview of the possibilities, straight head, angled head, dispensing into different plate formats. And uh, yes, Ara, by the way, are there already pending questions? Hi, yes, thanks a lot for the demo, Boris. Um, yes, we do have a few questions. One of the questions um, is, how do you clean and maintain the valves? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, as you saw before already, it's quite easy to remove a valve. I'm gonna switch off the air and now I'm gonna remove the one from channel eight. So this could be one possibility, you remove the valve from the dispensing head and you can change it with another one, for example, with an already cleaned one or with a different uh, nozzle size, or you can clean the one here in the sonic bath, you can autoclave, you can sonicate it, <clears throat> Further, you can use our uh, manual cleaning kit to give them a deep clean every week, every month, depending on your applications. Or further, we are on the way to launch a fully automated cleaning station where you can uh, clean eight valves at the same time, fully automated. Of course, you can also use the, uh, a cleaning bottle, for example, by attaching a, a cleaning solution, let's say millicule water or ethanol, and flush it through the actual channel on the dispenser himself by using the maintenance function in the software. Those are all the different possibilities we can offer you. Thanks for that, Boris. Um, we have another question. How easy and simple is it to create an experiment a protocol? Can you share with some of the software quickly? Yes, of course. So 
So therefore, I'm going to share my screen. So here you can see the software called Certus Control. And at the moment, you can see the protocol from before dispensing, uh, let me check, two microliter in the lowest section. And now I'd like to show you how to create a protocol based on a 384, for example. In here, you can define different regions, like in Excel, because the system's thinking in different regions. Let's say we like to dispense into this section here. At the moment, only fluid eight is available because we only have one channel configured with the Falcon tube. <clears throat> and then you have the possibility to use all the built-in functions, which is a constant volume. You can enter then your well volume for all of them. Or you can say I like to have a linear function or a factor. Factor will work, would look like this, 100 nanoliters. And the end volume should be, let's say five. Then the system is calculating the factor or you can use the factor. And let's say you want to have a factor like this. And there are uh, uh, a lot of other options then in those different functions. You can also import from Excel. You can import CSV uh, data. All those things are possible. You can also change the order of dispensing, the axe movement. You can uh, create replicates, all built in. And of course, you can also use the same software if you have an integrated version. Let me show you how this could look like. That was the wrong one. Let me create a linear function starting at point one up to three. And now I'm gonna flush the channel because before I removed uh, the tubing from the channel, so there is now some air bubbles in. Therefore, I'm gonna flush the channel. And now we can dispense onto the plate holder. I'm gonna switch off my screen. That's the result then. Gradient starting at a small volume of 100 nanoliter up left, ending up with three micro at bottom right. Great, thanks for that, Boris, again. We have a question from Sandra. She's asking, do we ever get any cross contamination and how do you avoid that using the Certus Flex? Yeah, so cross contamination was never an issue we we saw in the past uh, because it's a non-contact dispensing technology. Uh, there is almost no risk to get cross contamination. I try to show you how close the valve is above the plate by starting the same protocol again. It's maybe hard to see, but. There's only a gap of one millimeter. And uh, there is no, uh, there's no chance for cross contamination. Yeah, and uh, our microwaves are precise enough to, to not uh, creating satellites or splashing. Yeah, right. That's, uh, and, and, and also I think it's really good to mention also um, that everything is autoclavable. Everything you can clean and wash and reuse again. Exactly, yeah. So that's the cross contamination during the dispensing process, but regarding uh, changing from one fluid to the other. Of course, you can, you can uh, autoclave or uh, sterilize all of the parts of the fluid parts. So bubble caps, uh, fitting, tubings, inlet adapter valves, 
Yeah, as long as you keep them clean, there is no risk of cross-contamination. And the Certusplex itself has a small footprint, so you can actually fit it into a, um, a, a hooded cabinet as well. So we have a few customers doing it that way as well. Thank you so much, Boris, for the live demonstration, and thanks to Sabrina also for presenting. We would like to thank everybody for joining this webinar. If you have any further questions, please reach out to us at sales at fgiga.ch. Our contact details are here and wish you all a nice day, a nice evening and uh, thank you once again. Bye bye.